this turn my presentation to the possible scenarios. Now, if I outline the two most likely scenarios for Afghanistan in the near future, and that's the very near future, that's within a year, as I see it. In the first scenario, I've chosen to call it the Emirate 2.0. And uh, many foresee, many an uh, uh, analysts see this as the most likely uh, scenario. Then we'll have a we'll have a, a, a Taliban-led Afghanistan. Uh, it will be moderated from the Taliban we saw in from 1996 to 2001. And in such a scenario, we will see. Uh, we'll see the international community slowly dropping aid and support. We'll see a massive drop down in economic investments and very bad prospects for the young Afghan, uh, Afghan generation, especially the ones that has supported and uh, that has grown up in this system. In this scenario, the first massive struggle for the Taliban will be the budget. Because when you take over a system, you also take over the expenses. And they will have to make drastic cuts from the very beginning. Now, when you hear them communicate now from, from Doha, they, they have an expectation that the international financial support will continue at the same level. And everybody knows, of course, this will not happen. But the reason why they do this is, of course, that they do not want to address the problems that they will face immediately after a takeover. They will have to make drastic cuts in the expenses within the education sector, within the health sector, and that this is the worst part for them, within the security sector. And the cuts will not be small, they will be very big. And within the security sector, this will leave thousands of soldiers unemployed. And suddenly they will face a similar problem that the government is facing right now. When they make the cuts within education and health, they would also face um, serious problems from the population that will demand basic civil services. That means that the support for a Taliban-led regime will also uh, decrease. This, was, this will most likely lead to stronger control measurements from the Taliban side. And it will also leave the country open for other movements to move in. And in other words, we could very quickly be back where we started in 2001. The second scenario, and the scenario that I find most likely, unfortunately, that's civil war. And if you look at the internal uh, power dynamics over the last 12 months, you have seen mobilization on different fronts, not only from government and from the Taliban, but also from, from the, the previous warlords, they are now politicians within Kabul, but, but, but they are preparing for, for this scenario. And an often overlooked aspect is uh, the insustainability of the system that, that, that the West also has, has put in place. And a, a repeated argument in, when, in, in the debate on uh, on Afghanistan is that the military engagement has been prioritized over the financial and the development aid. And I would actually assume that many of you would, 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 would agree to this point. Um, I'm on the quite opposite opinion. I think the financial aid, the development aid, has been far too huge. I think that too much money in too short time into a country that could not absorb it has been the perfect recipe for massive corruption and the build-up of artificial 
institutions. So Afghanistan has a system now that cannot survive. I mean, it has an expiry date as long as the financial aid from the international community, uh, c community is there, then it can stay alive. But everybody knows, and especially the part, uh, the, the, the parties within the systems at the very top, they are perfectly aware that this, this, this will not last. So of course, people within the system are also preparing for the scenario after the financial support decreases. As I said, this is the most likely scenario, as I see it. Um, I, I, I would compare it to the period uh, in Afghanistan from 89 to 92. As long as money keeps coming in, we can, we can, keep, uh, we, we, we can keep a state functioning. But as soon as you cut the financial pipeline, you would see huge divisions, you would see dissolving of, of the security forces, and you would most likely enter a period of, of the most disruptive period in, in, in Afghan history from 92 to 96, a full-blown civil war, not only with two fronts, but with several fronts. Now, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I, have, I have just uh, just a final possible third scenario. Uh, I thought I would, would be constructive as well. Um, and there is a possibility of a third scenario. And uh, this is interlinked with the talks, with the ongoing talks. And it's, of course, also uh, inter uh, interconnected with, with the election in November in, uh, in the US. Um, there is a slight possibility that the US will change its, its approach to Afghanistan for a limited period toward a support of the system as long as talks are ongoing. And this will leave time for also for, for Europe and Denmark to play a role. Uh, and I think Denmark can, can play a role in this scenario. Uh, I think especially the politicians could pursue uh, to have much more influence in NATO, pursuing um, and supporting uh, a strategy of a, of a, of a condition-based withdrawal still. Now, I know this, the system won't survive, but we need time to reform the system. Uh, and we need time for the most important thing, and that is to identify the regional the possible regional solution. And this regional solution will not be based on value politics. I understand the irony, uh, the, the, the bad timing, as the foreign minister uh, was out stating that a new foreign policy uh, with, with Danish value will, will, will be developed now. But this solution will have to include Pakistan, it will have to include Iran. And I think that the most important word in this relation will be sustainability. The problem with Afghanistan for the last 10 to 15 years, the main problem has actually been violation of what you would call Pakistani and Iranian red lines. When you violate their red lines, you of course force them into an opposition and into taking countermeasures against a development that they see threat their own vital security interests. So the only possible solution, as I see it, is to continue a small, uh, a small engagement in Afghanistan, work in the interne international institutions, work for a regional solution, and of course, continue to do developing, uh, developing a developing project. But you need to rethink them. Uh, they need to focus on sustainability and they need to be much less expensive than they are today. Thank you, David. Uh, should we give him a hand? I had, it was a very optimistic start of the day.